All right, what's up everybody? So it's been two months since the release of God of War Ragnarok and I hope that means that by now you've been able to let the experience sort of sink in on you a little bit more as it has for me. Of course, I greatly enjoyed my time with it, made a huge video talking about what I thought of the game overall. But I will say that I was nonetheless left with a couple of grievances, right? Particularly when it came to the story. I just thought that the way they decided to end what was seemingly going to be that end of the Norse saga, as they themselves had announced God of War Ragnarok to be, I felt like certain things just weren't tied up in the way that I had initially figured they would be, right? I mean, I mainly talked about the question of who blew the horn. This is one of those things that I... This is what I loved about God of War 2018, how great of a job it did at setting up certain questions that Ragnarok was bound to be answering. And then ultimately I found that like, oh wait, it didn't really. I also found that, for example, the World Serpent's presence was, oddly enough, all that important. Uh, you know, it just wasn't all that important, right, in, in Ragnarok as a game, where I thought it, it was going to be a huge deal. The way that they left Sindri, for example, right? I mean, Brock dying there at the end certainly was a twist I didn't see coming and that left quite an impact on me. But then to see Sindri be in that obvious mourning process, yet um, kind of on bad terms with, with Kratos and with uh, Atreus, right? Where we had spent all that time in the, first, in the first game trying to get him reunited with his brother and seeing that relationship be a very happy one, seeing the relationship between Kratos and the dwarves be a, be a happy one as well. Um, it felt oddly strange to leave this, again, saga now, knowing that, you know, a future game might still be a long time away with that relationship left, you know, just dangling, I guess. So basically what I'm trying to say is that even though I greatly enjoyed God of War Ragnarok as a gameplay experience, and I talked about the open world, and I talked about, I mean, even the story had its fantastic moments, right? That portal conversation and everything. Again, go check out the video that I made if you want to see my full thoughts on the game. I love my time with it, but still it was these couple of things that felt oddly unsatisfying in a franchise that otherwise, you know, with these two games, I feel like they, they had done such a good job especially setting all that stuff up with God of War 2018 and then Ragnarok not not completely nailing, I guess, all the details in the end, which I had definitely figured in advance it would be doing. But this is when I started, therefore, watching also some of the interviews that Eric Williams, you know, he himself, the game director, of course, of the game, um, started appearing on a bunch of podcasts and talked about this game and the whole behind-the-scenes process, I guess, in the exact same vein that Cory Barlock used to do when 2018 came out. And I started to realize, I mean, it's especially that Eric Williams hints at a couple of things that made me understand that like, oh, the reason why they haven't necessarily cleared up some of these things is because they could still be answered pretty soon with a potential standalone game featuring Atreus. And of course, we know from the way that God of War Ragnarok ends, and I'm going to give you all some spoilers here, so keep that in mind. I assume by now everybody watching this has beaten the game. But um, God of War Ragnarok gives us two possible directions for a future game to head into. On one hand, we have Atreus taking off to find the rest of the giant marbles, right? He still has a bunch of marbles um, containing giant souls that he wants to be let loose in the world now that Odin has been defeated and these giants don't have to be hiding anymore, basically. Um, and then we have Kratos, who of course opens up this, uh, uh, yeah, this cabinet or whatever it's called, and sees a new path, as he puts it, right? Where he himself is actually being obeyed by people and he is seen as a good god, I guess, which is not exactly <laughs> the way he had ever pictured himself to, uh, to become, let's say. And so that is clearly teasing at wherever the next mainline game could be going. There's a bunch of theories whether it's going to be you know, Greek mythology or Hinduism, I saw, um, sorry, I said Greek, but I mean Egypt. Hinduism, uh, you know, mythology, uh, Celtic, I heard as well being mentioned. There's a bunch of directions they could be heading into there and a couple of things that they teased. I heard it being talked about how we can see Tyr, of course, doing a bunch of these Hinduism poses, I guess, you know, yoga type poses <laughs> that could be hinting at that direction being what they want to head into. But to me, it kind of feels like, well, they, they are teasing a couple of directions and they're just going to make up their minds uh, along the way themselves, whatever they want to do next. Santa Monica is undoubtedly working on a couple of different things. I have no doubt in my mind that Cory Barlock, who of course wasn't really involved with this game, 
has been helming his own project now for a while. He himself has pointed out how it's been a couple of years that he's been working on this now. And so I presume that he was given the opportunity to start a whole new IP, um, something that he himself feels passionate about. Of course, a new IP is what Sony Santa Monica has been wanting to do for a long time. They had their previous new IP canceled back in 2014, I think it was. And that was actually a huge deal because if God of War afterwards had failed then too, it, had, it was probably looking very bad for the studio at that point, right? Whereas now, all the possibilities are still left wide open. And I have no doubt that with Corey Borlock there and everybody, you know, the whole studio, of course, puts his faith into him after what he delivered with 2018. They're going to do a great job, most likely. Um, and, you know, the new IP is going to be something to look forward to. But again, Santa Monica is a huge studio. There's a lot of possibilities for what they could be doing next. But at the same time, I'm very well aware that these projects also take a long time to make. If we only think about God of War Ragnarok, it's been four and a half years since, you know, God of War 2018. They still needed that much time to make it, right? Think about this new IP that could still be years away from us. If they want to continue with a next mainline God of War game after the new IP gets released, we could still be looking at like another seven, eight years, possibly a PlayStation 6 release for whenever that game ultimately comes out. And so, again, I'm watching these interviews and I start to think about, okay, an Atreus standalone game definitely is a big possibility. It would, I can only assume, take a lot less dev time for them. It's going to be a little bit smaller scope and it will help them to clear up those last couple of questions because... Of course, you can decide to leave those questions of who blew the horn and um, re-establishing that relationship perhaps with Sindri. You can leave it for whatever the next mainline installment is going to be. That one is likely still going to contain characters here from the Norse saga too. You know, Freya, of course, is still coming along with Kratos. It's hard to see her sort of abandon the series now with the next game, right? All these things, it's like... <sighs> I guess Santa Monica for themselves has definitely opened... You know, uh, they've left the door wide open for them to do whatever they want to do. But I feel like it only makes sense that we're going to get a game in the exact same vein as we did with Miles Morales for Spider-Man, with The Lost Legacy for Uncharted, that now with Atreus, we're going to be getting a, a game like that too. And it makes, a, I, I feel like it's honestly so genius when you think about it. The fact that, and Eric Williams himself pointed it out in the interviews, is that they, in advance, already literally said, we're going to make Atreus playable, but we're only going to make him playable for about 25% of the game. It's the it's the exact right amount for people to still have basically a Kratos game, as they expect uh, expected God of War Ragnarok to be. But to get slowly introduced to like, okay, what if we play as a different character for once, right? So that whenever they do announce a, an Atreus standalone game now, it's not like that's going to come out of nowhere. It's not like that's going to have people complaining like, oh, I wish we could be playing as Kratos or something. They're already used to playing as Atreus through God of War Ragnarok, and they did so, you know, without being able to really complain at it, because it's still a relatively small part of the game. I think just, you know, thinking about those, um, the way that they get people sort of introduced to these concepts, it's pretty damn genius, right? Now, there's a few more hints that Eric Williams gave, and um, there's, by the way, you can watch a bunch of videos where people point these things out. I myself have been watching a couple of videos to get sort of caught up. I know there's one that Joe Raptor did, who is a great guy, by the way. I've, I've met him in real life once. Um, but yeah, he did a great, great job sort of summing up all the little clues that were left out there in these, in these podcasts, for example, um, specifically showing how Sony Santa Monica themselves in the back of their head basically already had this possibility i guess in mind for example uh, eric williams talked about how the team wanted to give atreus a different melee weapon but eric williams very much himself pushed for the fact that atreus had to keep using his bow of course he uses the bow for ranged combat but he also wanted him to use that bow for melee and specifically what I, what he said is that well we wanted to give him or i specifically wanted to give him room to grow so that in the future he can still get a melee weapon of his own but of course in god of War ragnarok we never see him actually getting anything like that he also gets these companions like um uh, ingrid i think uh, the, the sword was called right which uh is of course a great way to open the door for like oh he himself can get his companions that way in his own game uh, the same way that we've seen some other characters like Anger Boda and Thrut accompanying him uh, you know as well right there's for example also the fact that specifically when thinking about Sindri 
it's Atreus who goes on some of these missions together with Sindri, right? He has a bit of a special bond with him. Already sort of teasing to us that the two of them make a great pair. And of course, gives it all the more reason for that storyline involving Sindri to be resolved in a game revolving around Atreus. And then the last, and you know, this is basically, if you'd ask me, the biggest giveaway of them all, is that Eric Williams specifically highlighted how Atreus' final scene that he has, not only saying goodbye to Kratos, but having this moment with Angaboda where the two of them actually exchange these, uh, these marbles, it's not a way of saying goodbye, it's actually um, the way Eric Williams put it, they're basically... They're, they're, they're gonna be doing this together, is literally what he said. They're gonna be a thing, they're gonna be on this quest together, and the marbles will actually treat like compasses, and will allow the two to find each other back. It's a dead giveaway for the fact that we're going to see what their adventure is gonna look like, and once again, it brings me back to that point of like, well, if you don't want to do it almost straight away, when else are you going to do it? Are you going to do it after that new IP comes out? Are you going to do it in five to, to seven years or something when their actors are going to be much older already? It's literally going to be impossible, right? It feels to me like um, this is definitely what they had been planning all this time, is that we're going to get a standalone God of War game in the very near future still. I'd expect it to take another one and a half to perhaps two years max and it'll simultaneously help to answer those last couple of questions. We'll get to find out, you know, who blew the horn. I mean, presumably it could be Atreus himself in the future or whatever, right? The World Serpent is still going to play, play a larger role than he ultimately did in God of War Ragnarok. Um, Sindri's relationship can slowly start to be restored perhaps already. And I, I think it's just, it's probably perfect. I mean, it's also, it makes so much sense from a developer's perspective of wanting to use all those resources that you've spent all this time creating, you know, to just make something a little bit smaller budget still out of it, um, rack in some extra cash because, you know, I mean, they deserve it, let's be honest. They did a great job at setting up this universe and two games, it just almost, I mean, it felt like, too little for how great this journey has been um there is there is one topic that i still wanted to i guess bring up is like why is playstation in particular choosing to go with this business model i mean at this point it's very clear of course what they're going for with their direction regarding nearly all these franchises whether you take horizon whether you take god of war perhaps ghost of tsushima right there is the last of us of course they have these mainline games that take four to five years to develop that are huge in scope and then they build a bunch of stuff around them right from spin-off titles like we've seen with miles morales and the lost legacy um from tv shows that they've announced with the last of us god of war is getting a tv show by the way as well horizon is uh perhaps multiplayer games right we saw it with ghost of tsushima legends we saw it with um, Horizon now, which is getting a, a multiplayer project, has been revealed. Factions is coming out. Perhaps the next God of War or, you know, the standalone game could have some type of co-op feature. Although I would expect it to remain single player only myself. But the possibility is always there. I, like, I find it fascinating that in terms of the game products, let's say, that they do decide to make him as massive in scope as they are. And, like... You know, me personally, I've always been an advocate, of course, for smaller, more intimate game experiences. I don't see that as a bad thing. I, you know, myself think that the perfect length for a game is about 15 to 20 hours. It doesn't need to be that 40 hour, hell, 50 hour, perhaps even package like God of War Ragnarok was with a bunch of side content. I mean, it's great, of course, nobody's complaining about it and it's definitely worth the money. But is it is it necessary? You know, could this game not have sold the exact same amount of copies for literally half of the, the length that it ultimately ended up being is the question that I ask myself. I can only assume that PlayStation, you know, they, they, they've got a bunch of spreadsheets telling them what exactly they need to deliver for people to want to buy these games. So in that way, I'm a little bit surprised because I would imagine that going honestly with that smaller skilled approach, it's not even like smaller skilled makes it sound... Um, yeah, like it is actually small, but it wouldn't be, right? A 20-hour game is still plenty of content, if you'd ask me. And God of War Ragnarok in itself, already as big as it was, still ended up feeling a little bit rushed. It felt like that story could have been spread out better across two games, actually. That simultaneously could have been, of course, there for a bit shorter each. 
didn't even need to have as many uh, uh, gameplay improvements in between there for either. It's it's interesting because I feel like they're only making it hard on, them, on themselves by you know making these games as massive as they are because it only means that they don't get to release them as often, right? What is the reason for not going with a little bit more of a, you know, again, I wouldn't call it an episodic approach, but uh, to, to go with the sequel approach like we used to see it back in the PS3 days. Think about how an Uncharted game would release every two years. They could have done that with, with, with God of War as well. They could have just had Ragnarok release three years after 2018, make it a bit smaller and then end with a, with a third game that would have sold probably just as well in 2024 or 25 that would have worked the exact same way with a standalone game now i feel like you are actually kind of asking for it to sell a little bit less right like a spin-off game nobody is ever going to really feel as inclined to you know to 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 want to play it i guess i do see what they're doing with of course leaving those couple of questions out there and so the real com completionists will feel like okay i need to play this particular game to um yeah, to, to feel like I've truly completed, I guess, the God of War, uh, uh, the Norse saga experience, to put it like that. But again, we saw it in the Sills of the Lost Legacy, and we see it in Miles Morales. They don't end up selling as well. It's definitely an interesting choice. And again, I'm not saying that it's the wrong choice necessarily. I can only assume, like I said, PlayStation knows what they're doing, and they, they research these things. They know exactly what they need to offer um, Yeah, to, to generate the most the most profit out of it but i'm definitely curious to see what that yeah like what what the reason for that looks like like you know it's of course easy to treat things from my perspective the way i want my products to be to put it like that but clearly the vast majority of gamers does presumably um you know care much more to get that 40 50 hour experience or else they wouldn't be as inclined to put their money towards it and so playstation feels like they need to increase that scope the way they have been for nearly all of their you know first party games even the last of us part 2 which is a strictly linear single player game probably the most polished um type of game that they put out even that one has a scope that's that's so much larger than any of uh, naughty dog's previous games were right so clearly they put a large emphasis on this nowadays and i'm actually curious from you all in the comments why do you think that is what is uh, the reason for it is it personally from your perspective warranted would you um you know would it would it be a requirement for you to be willing to buy these games is something that i'm definitely curious to find out about yeah because that's kind of the, the 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 last conversation i could still briefly bring up is you have to wonder if the appeal of this standalone game is going to be as great as any of the mainline god of war you know god of war games would have not just because it's a it's going to be a spin-off of what would otherwise be mainline games but also because the cast is simply not going to appeal i would presume to as many people i mean Kratos is looked at as the face of God of War in the same vein that Nathan Drake is for Uncharted and so therefore you saw that a game playing with Chloe yeah it's great for the fans and they'll still very much enjoy it it's not what the mainstream public is going to lean towards right I feel like the same thing is going to happen with an Atreus game just like it would happen with a Miles Morales game it's it's interesting because to me <laughs> but again it's just a feeling that I have it feels like it's not necessary you know you can you can probably generate more profit literally by uh making more mainline games and spreading out the journey a little bit more than you had you know the, the way you did it just now but again guys that's basically all my thoughts that i had on uh the future of god of war again i have no doubt in my mind we're obviously going to see a next mainline installment we're going to a whole new you know mythology uh, at some point in the future but that will still be a long while away First, the new IP is going to be coming. We could still have that standalone Atreus game coming in the very near future then. And, you know, a, a, a true next God of War experience that uh, perhaps is also going to bring along, I would, uh, you know, presume plenty of gameplay improvements. Um, maybe, you know, a whole new gameplay system. Who knows, right? But uh, a, a new setting, something truly fresh, that's still going to be... I mean, if we're lucky, it's still going to happen within the next decade. Let's put it like that. So for now, guys, uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments. How do you feel about uh, the future of God of War? And then I want to thank you a lot for watching. Of course, make sure that you subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell as I'll be uploading videos on gaming topics here on a weekly basis. And then I hope to see you again next time.